Hey guys, Lightane here, and on today's episode of Is It Worth It, I'm going to be talking about Digimon Digital Card Battle. In order to fully get this game across to you, you will need to know a brief history of Digimon as a franchise. All the way back in the late 1990s, a small device was released that was the boy equivalent of a Tamagotchi. This was a virtual pet that you could raise, it would evolve, and you could even battle other people with it. I, like most kids, had one, and we would cheat the devices all the time by playing with the battery in order to get better monsters. The popularity of these toys sparked an anime called Digimon Adventure and it was then dubbed and released outside of Japan. This show was very well received and was shown to kids during our morning TV show, Cheese TV. This was a show that was pretty funny but had quite a few adult themes in them and talked about growing up. There have been multiple series to the anime with new heroes and new Digimon added every single time and they are still making it today. Naturally, this also sparked video games that were based around both the show and other ones that tried to do their own thing. So Digimon Digital Card Battle was released June 28, 2001 if you lived in America, but July 5th, 2002, over a year later for us in Australia. This game follows its own story but has very many references and characters from the show. If you hadn't seen the two, first two major seasons of the show, then a lot of the game will be kind of lost on you. The general story is that you are the new kid to the digital card game world which is sort of an offshoot of the main world of the show, I guess. Your dream is to become the greatest card tamer in the world, which is pretty generic. But as the game progresses, you learn of a sinister plot involving a virus Digimon and the end of the digital world. <gasps> and of course, you stop it with cards. Now, like I said, if you haven't watched the main series, then a lot of the characters and a lot of what they say will just fly by you and you won't really care. But that being said, this game is not marketed towards people that don't know what Digimon is. It's not an introduction to the lore or an introduction to the world. No, it's definitely marketed to people that already know about this. The gameplay for this game is very simple, but also very, very repetitive. You take it in turns to try and kill your opponent's Digimon, and the first to kill three of them wins. You can also win if your opponent can't draw any more cards, but winning this way is harder than you think. As the game is based off of the way Digimon works, when you start, you can only summon a rookie level Digimon. Anything higher results in them having diminished power. You then put cards away into a Digivolve point slot, and if you have enough points, and the right kind of Digimon, then you can evolve into a stronger one. Once both you and your opponent have a Digimon, then you select one of the three attacks to use. Circle is usually the strongest but easily countered. Triangle is weaker but safer. X is the weakest of them all, but usually has some kind of special effect uh, attached to it, such as counter circle or switch opponent's attack. Then you have a choice of playing a support card in order to boost your turn. This can be to make attacks stronger, heal yourself, change opponent's attacks. If you have nothing good in your hand, you can always try your luck and draw from the top card of the deck and just see what happens. Finally, the fight begins and the attacks are calculated. Whoever is first hits first, and if the other Digimon survives, then they attack back. This is then minus from their HP, and if it reaches zero, it's a KO, and the new one must be summoned. If not, then play goes on to the next player, and they have a chance to play cards to heal or Digivolve themselves. Play continues like this until one of you is the victor, and the other walks away in shame. Come on. Come on. Come on. These cutscenes take forever. Um, what's going on with my screen? Ah! Oh wow, I just got sucked into the digital world. Let's go explore, I'm sure there's crazy looking places. Like, my room. Wow, this area looks remarkably like my room. Like I said, this game is highly repetitive. All of the battles look the same. True, there will be different cards in them, and sometimes there's a very different music track, but all of them are the same. As the game progresses, it does get harder as your opponents get better cards in their decks, and a few of them cheat, to be honest. The whole point of the game is that you go into a town, you talk to the people, you unlock the arena, which is a series of fights, you win that arena, you talk to some people in the town, 
you go to the next one. Rinse and repeat for the entire game. As it goes on, it does get a little bit more complex where you have to talk to some people in this town and then talk to some people in this town before you can unlock the battle in this town. This is a card game and as such, there are 301 cards for you to collect just so they could put on the box over 300 cards, I bet. You can only have a deck of 40 cards, however, so choose your cards carefully. There are five different types that you can choose from, and each of them have their strengths and weaknesses. There's fire, which has strong attack below HP, water, which is high HP but low attack, nature has average attack above average HP but very fast digivolution, dark have high attack but slow digivolution, and lastly, rare are average all around but have great supporting effects. Sticking to one or two types is the best way to win the game, but due to the way that your opponents use their own cards in their own decks, you might have to adapt and change yours to suit them. As a slight variation to the normal cards that you can play as, you do have a partner Digimon. They level up as you play if they are in your deck, and as they level up, their stats go up including their attack and HP, and they can gain Digi parts, which is basically equipment. Each one of them can have three pieces of equipment attached to them at one time, which change their stats, and also can change what they can do. Such as their X attack might be circle to zero, but you can change that to circle counter. They are also unique in that once you have their corresponding Digi egg, when you summon them, you can do their armor evolution straight away. This makes them a lot stronger, but they also can't Digivolve again later, so they are stuck. I used to play this game a lot as a kid. Maybe it's because I really enjoyed playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Magic the Gathering cards. This was a cheaper way of playing. I didn't have to buy booster packs all the time, I just had to put some hours into the game to get the rarest of cards. And although I talked down the gameplay for the, the game and the story is pretty generic, it did entertain me and it did keep me going throughout the whole thing, trying to find out what was going to happen next. This game is very difficult, especially if you want 100% this, because in order to do so, you have to collect every single card of the game, you have to fight every single person about a bazillion zillion times. There's also a few other random things that you have to do in order to reach that 100%. And what happens when you get there? Nothing. There is no reward. So even though I really enjoyed this game, I would definitely say that it's not worth it. The lack of variety and the difficulty spikes makes for a very long and hard game that if you are not a fan of card games, you will not be able to get into. Also as a pro tip, turn off battle cutscenes in the menu and it will save you so much time in the fights. Though when you first do this, it will be very confusing because everything happens really quickly and you're not really sure what's going on, but you will get used to it. I am an evil virus, and I have come to destroy the world. Oh yeah? Well, I know your greatest weakness. What is that? A card game. Paul Agumon, Digivolve into Paul Greymon. Then Ultra Digivolve into War Paul Greymon. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and just tell me what you thought if you've ever played Digimon Digital Card Battle because I know a lot of people have not. It's one of those more obscure games. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.